I uh, I did dye my hair. Thank you for noticing. Yeah, yeah, it's blue. Used to be red. Yeah, totally. You know, I've been wanting to dye my hair this color. Actually, it's not technically blue. It looks blue, which is weird. I don't know why. It's technically like a tealish green kind of thing. And I've been wanting to dye it this color for a very long time. And I have it because I was afraid it was going to get all weird and funky with the green screen. Um, turns out, no. Just looks blue. Um, but yeah, thank you for noticing. Not a lot of people said anything about it. So that's nice of you. Anyway, hello, enough of that, people. How you guys doing? Um, I'm back. I've been sick. Dude, it's been horrible. Like, um, I was fine actually dyeing my hair one day, uh, last week. And around 8 p.m., some kind of common cold or something just came and freaking bitch slapped me across the face. And that was that. That's all she wrote. I was sick. Just like that, boom. And uh, very contagious stuff. Everybody in my family got sick. Like, my mom never got sick. Um, people in my family just never get sick. And we all got it. We we all just in bed for days. And uh, fun fun part was I had to go to work like this. And not only did I have to go to work like this, I had to go to work like this and cover from one of my brothers that got sick at the exact same time. We got bitch slapped at the very same time. Um, so I had to, uh, you know, talk and act on stage and be all bubbly and fun and, you know, performance while feeling like death. That was fun. So, um, every moment I wasn't there, I was in bed. So, yeah, I fell behind, like, replying comments and stuff. I read a lot of them. Uh, sorry I haven't been, you know replying or anything i've been half dead but anyway i feel better now and uh cough is back cough drop is back sorry about that but that's the only way i can do this and um so anyway enough about me how you guys doing <laughs> anyway we have the ricky gervais show again this is like i hate doing these sick it's the worst thing i i stay away from the abroad especially with you know what I've seen season three to be. Aw. Uh, stay away from that because that's just going to kill me. And I hate watching Carl things while I feel like this because I know it's going to set me back. But I can't help it. I enjoy it too much. I can help the idiot abroad thing because I like watching those when I'm at my splendor or whatever. Splenda. I don't know. Um, but this will have to do. This will have to cover the Carl quota. <laughs> <laughs> for the next few days uh season two episode 11 mrs mrs battered b anyway uh i get loopy when i'm sick i'm loopy when i'm not sick i'm loopy always but i get more loopy when i'm sick so yeah deal with it because <laughs> that's all i got anyway uh that took a while, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say, yo, and explain a little bit about what's going on. Anyway, I'm fine. It's just the cough thing, which pisses me off, too, because it has gone almost completely, and now it's back, and who knows how long this time. But whatever. Also, I wanted to say sorry about the comments, but... <laughs> and also, I, like, I got so far behind, it's really hard for me to catch up, so sometimes it's just... Oh, well. Sorry. Anyway, let's go. The number of times I find a theory that he said in gobbledygook, but it's true. I, I think that, um, I just, I think he's been dealt a bad hand mm. in the brain department. <laughs> Do you know what <laughs> sure. I mean? Yeah. Thoughts, Carl? Well, your brain's in two bits, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I wonder if one half is really good, the other half's messing it up. <laughs> yeah, that could be the case. That could be the case. Yeah, well, it is split into two. Yeah, and they and they are. Uh... There was an episode House about that. There was a guy that you knew how to play the piano, but he was half of his brain was exactly like that, and it was messing up the other half of his brain. So they removed half of his brain, and he just lit up like a Christmas tree, and was um all smart. But anyway, a response. That's that could be the case. Sometimes. That could be the case. Yeah. Well, it is split into two. Yeah. And they and they are, are responsible for different things. 
Yeah. It's like these sort of families where there's a kind of really bright kid and then a sort of wayward child who just gets into drugs and stuff. Sort of like that up there. Yeah. Why know. does it look like Shaggy? You have, you have quite sort of out there nebulous thoughts and you've got a lot of common sense, haven't you? And just having that, uh, that other sense of, like, this is dodgy. What spider sense? Just that sense where you just go, I, I don't know why, but something's telling me we shouldn't be here. When you go, all right, let's go. <laughs> and you move sure. from it, and you don't know what, what that is. Yeah. You don't know what's decided that. You know, it's like when you're lost. A part of my brain's got me lost, but then there's another bit that I don't know what it is where they go, go left. <laughs> And you do, and then you go. So, Remember that time when you called me? I said I don't know where I am, and yeah. I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> Think of that! Think of that! I called him. Oh my God! What are you doing? I don't know where I am. What do you mean you didn't know where you were? What, you... I got lost. I what, went in wandering. London. You got yeah, lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I went wandering, and then uh, you know. I it's was when like... he first moved into his new place. He was yeah. walking back from there you go, his there old you place go. to his new place, and he didn't know where he was. He tried How can to you ever short. really get lost in London, though? I'm just it's um, cabby. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that because you feel bad pulling one over and then saying, where am I? Um, <laughs> That's not what he meant. <laughs> yeah, they don't appreciate that, do they? But um, I found my way back, didn't I? Yeah. But you told me one minutes. time that you, uh, that you you much prefer getting lost. You love wandering around and getting lost. Yeah, you said go, That's much better. Yeah, it the was a cold sand. day. It was a cold day. I just wanted to be at home. I had things to do. There's mm. a time and place to be lost. Well, uh, when, go on. Uh, well, a place What's you don't place? know. What's the place to be lost? Somewhere you don't know. Right, good. Okay. And specific. the time? The time, time when, when you're not in a rush. Right. Uh, but that time, I was in a rush. Sure, sure. And I was cold. So a typical argument in your head is what? I'm lost. Um, I'll, do one, I'll do one side of the brain, you do the other side of the brain, okay? In your oh head, boy. okay? Carl. What? This isn't where we should be. You want to go home, didn't you? This isn't your house, because it's a, it's a field. You live in a house, don't you? Why are we standing in a field? This isn't your house. You were meant to go home, but you've walked into a field. No, but that wouldn't... I've, I've never been that lost, where I'm walking <laughs> across a field. <laughs> At the edge of the field, I'd go, hang on a minute, this isn't right. I wouldn't get in the middle. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I'd go, right, I definitely shouldn't be here. You did once. You were in the, in the middle of a field, and your dad had to rescue yeah, you. Yeah, that's when I was a kid, kid, because I was reading as I was walking. That's... <laughs> And he never read again. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another sense. I was in the middle of nettles there. That explains it. <laughs> but there's another sense. I was in the middle of nettles there. Yeah. I'd walked. It was at uh, it was at my brother's wedding in Cornwall, mm. and I was walking near a cliff edge, <laughs> reading a book. Hold up. He has a brother. I feel I feel like after two seasons, eleven episodes of this one, thirteen episodes of the first one, and two seasons of an idiot abroad. I feel like I should have heard more mention of a brother. I'm curious. Is he anything like him? Like, you know how there's. It, like, oh, Wilson and oh, Wilson's brother. I don't remember his name, but something Wilson. They're the same thing. They're the same guy, but one's blonde and the other has brown hair. So is there another round-headed Pilkington that could add to the comedy gold mess? <laughs> I didn't. Okay. I was wedding in Cornwall, and I was walking near a cliff edge. <laughs> Reading a book. Reading. And okay, so, so, uh, so, okay. Fucking <laughs> Carl. I know you're enjoying this book. I've got, can I have a word with you? Just look, Left. Just, just look past the book a minute. It's, it's just there's a big drop. Yeah. Well, that's what happened, and then right. that's when my other senses went. Hang on a minute. I'm being stung. <laughs> Load of nettles and stuff. And I just had to wait there for ages until my dad sort of thought, "Where's Carl?" I was there for about an hour and a half. You should have booked. At least. <laughs> But why are you wandering off reading a book when it's your brother's wedding? No, this was like, we were in, uh, I think it was St. Ives, St. Ives in Cornwall. Yeah. Yeah, it was in St. Ives. And uh, just, you know, it was a nice day and that. There was no telly in the place. It was a horrible house. Um, it's this old, it was haunted, actually. 
No, honestly. No, not honestly. It wasn't haunted. There's no such thing as ghosts. So, those, so you saying honestly it was haunted means fuck all. It's the most. It's the weirdest place and weirdest sensation I've ever had. I spoke to a woman called Mrs. Battersby. Right. Uh, who sat in my bed keeping me up all night. My mum came up, she said, you look shattered. I said, yeah, I had a kip all night. She said, why? I said, I've been talking to Mrs. Battersby. She said, who's that? I said, no, oh, some old woman. Now, I can't remember it now, but that's what I did then. And then... Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, so Mrs. Battersby didn't exist. Is that what you're saying? She was the ghost? Yeah. It wasn't the landlady? No, there's no landlady. It's a big house, about, right. about 12 bedrooms in it. Right. Dead, dead cheap to stay there, because it was a wreck. My mum and dad went out all night. That, that no, I had nothing like that. I just... So you were sitting up, but you were awake... And you were having a conversation with Mrs. Battersby. Mm. Of course. <laughs> what did she look like? I can't remember. I can't even remember having the chat now. Right, but so... at the time, I was like, oh, she just doesn't shut up. Chatting all night. So you don't remember this happening? Or you do remember it happening? No, I remember that, like, if I see my mum now and I mention St. Ives, she'll go, oh, yeah, Mrs. Battersby. She remembers coming in, because she was older than me, wasn't she? So to hey. her, my mum. Was she? Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Battersby. She was older than both she of you. She was old because I'm calling her Mrs. Battersby. If she was my age, I'd probably say, "Oh, it's Susan or whatever." Right, sure. You call Batter older people Batter by the surname, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so she kept oh, me up all night. You know, I'm thinking of pictures at the wedding. Uh, why do you have to go through other things to just have a memory? How old do you reckon you why were? Do, why, I don't understand why you haven't got direct access to your memories. How old do you reckon you were? <laughs> I'm the same uh, way. Your mum was older, though, yeah? You must have a vague idea of when this well, event was. I'm thinking about it now, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm, I'm picturing the picture of myself at this wedding. OK. And how old are you? What are you doing? How tall I'd say you? I look about... How were you? Uh, uh, about, I'd say well... I look about seven or eight, looking at the picture. Right, OK. <laughs> yeah. Right, OK. So Mrs Battersby is chatting away to you. You don't remember what she said, but you do remember having the conversation. No, he doesn't remember it at I all. I don't remember the chat now. Well, then so, why are you telling us? You must your remember memory. it, because you're telling us about it's not it. Your because memory. it's a memory. My mum's reminded me of it. Yeah, but all it says is, oh, this is so far removed. This is hearsay that your mum said you spoke to a ghost once, and you don't even remember the ghost. Mrs but... Battersby. No, yeah, you no, remember you don't the name, remember remember because her. your mum reminded you of it. In a court of law, if there was a ghost court, <laughs> they go, hearsay, thrown out of court. Right. <laughs> you don't have a memory of Mrs Battersby. No, look, I know that when I was a kid, yeah. I had a beetle. I ate a beetle because I thought it was licorice. Now, I can't remember that now. Oh. You can't remember that, but you, you know it happened because your mother told you it happened. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but the fundamental thing is that we can believe... <laughs> we can believe... <laughs> we can believe you ate a beetle, right, because that is something that could happen in real life. Right. What we're questioning is that you spoke to a ghost. <laughs> I thought it was licorice. Uh, <laughs> Just one of them standard beetles, just a black shiny one. <laughs> Thing is, right, a couple of years ago we were in the ivy and the food came and there's a big blob of wasabi, right? It was like a, a um, got a, a called an oriental hors d'oeuvre, right? And uh, I looked over at Carl and he started going, <gasps> drinking water. I said, what have you done? He said, I have that. I said, that was a blob of wasabi. He said, I thought it was one mushy pea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classy restaurant, they're serving one mushy pea. Well, they do that, don't they? Wow. Small portions. It's all trendy, isn't it? Yeah. I love the fact that it's this, exactly the same thing. Yeah. They've swapped beetle for wasabi yeah. and licorice for pea. Uh, you see things, you see something... You it's think, a good job you remember that anecdote, though, cos he doesn't. <laughs> exactly, yeah. In years to come, we'll be going, ate some wasabi once, did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, according to Ricky, I did, yeah. I was in the ivy. I thought, I thought it were mushy pea. <laughs> <laughs> So hang on, I just want to go back to Mrs. Battersby because what you confidently the... said, you confidently said uh, it, was it, was, it was haunted, it was the most haunted place, yeah. but you've got no real evidence for it because even, even you claim you had this encounter, you don't even remember it. Yeah, but you don't remember everything in life. But you do supposedly you? had a conversation with a ghost. I know, yeah. but I didn't know when I was younger. I but didn't you remember think that the was specifics of an oh, aunt so walking you, around? Yeah, so you thought, ah, oh, so I see. If you'd have had the memory, it would just be a nice old lady on the end of your bed all night. Right. And then, it, 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 then when I mentioned it, my mum was saying, "What do you mean?" Mrs. Battersby. Who's Mrs. Battersby? Right. When you're a kid, you're not terrified, are you? No. Nothing scary. I mean, I'm, I'm beginning to think who the fuck is Mrs. Battersby. I must. I used to be scared of everything. What the hell are you talking about? As a kid, I was a complete freaking chicken about everything. Everything scared me. So what the hell are you talking about? Fear is different and more rational when you're a child. I wasn't scared of things. I should probably be scared of now. Like, I would climb trees and do a whole bunch of things, that, that kind of stuff, rocks and 
you know, be places you shouldn't be because it's scary if you fall down. But you don't you don't think about falling down when you're a kid. But I was scared of other stuff, you know, the typical monsters under my bed and that kind of stuff that makes no sense. I still am, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, not so much anymore, but about a year ago. Yeah. I admit, but so, yeah, anyway. that was nothing scary. I mean, I'm, I'm beginning to think who the fuck is Mrs. Battersby, I must admit. But So, yeah, that was, uh, but it was a weird place. I mean, there was no telly. Um, all they had for sort of company was a calculator. <laughs> for company? <laughs> Carl, you're wow. the strangest little man that's, that's ever lived. Company, he had a company. Oh, no. There goes Carl with his friend. What's his friend? That's oh, not what he meant. This is Sanyo 4197G. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Oh, calculator, do that boobs thing again. Uh, my mum and dad used to go Memories. out. I stayed in there. Just shots of him with his calculator <laughs> on the beach. My only friend was a calculator. <laughs> Like, uh, That's not what he meant! Oh God! Just the most shots of him in Vietnam! He's carrying Tommy! With the batteries! With the batteries tied there! It's on a funeral for him! His batteries are all over the floor! Oh, fucking hell! The only company was a calculator! Before I used to knock around with a brick! Oh, 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 oh fuck me! We have to face facts here. Go on. The oh world boy. is old. Hold on. All right, okay. The yeah, world is old. The world is old. Is a fact. Yep. That is a fact. It's the same as if you've got a gran mm. who's 70. Yeah. Um, there's not much you can do for her. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can say you're warm, mm. but at the end of the day, she's still going to be shit in her pants. <laughs> she's still going to be, you know, forgetting things mm. right. and all the rest of it. And you might be taking care of her, but at the end of the day, the good days are gone. <laughs> right. Yeah. So... In a way, like the world, it's got to a point that it's old. And, yeah, we can say turn the tap off, turn the lights off, mm. uh, close the windows, stop letting heat out. Uh, the earth, in, metaphorically, is shitting its pants. We are not the same as the first man that nature made. No. What? No, not, I didn't... The first man that nature made. I didn't made. follow that. We are not the same as the first man that nature made. Okay. No. No, we're not, no. And that's where we went wrong. And if we didn't interfere at that point, we might have been more suited to the conditions now. And in aura. Right. I'm cold. She doesn't want double glazing. Why not? Just because she's worried that when people come round and sort of knock on the door, she won't hear them. Because it's, <laughs> it's all sort of double glazed. But they're knocking on the door. <laughs> no, no, but she said that, no, she didn't like a bell. It makes her jump too much. Well, what, how, 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 how do they get in now? Well, it's the thin door, the thin glass. You hear it. It's not like soundproof, like double glazing is. What, so they, she, they have to knock they on knock the... They knock like that on the door. And she can hear that because but it's like a wooden door. why are they going to double glaze the door? Is it a glass door? No, they want to put that PVC door in him with Hang the on, thicker so glass. Hang on, so she's scared by... She doesn't want a doorbell because that alarms her, but the knocking is fine? The knocking's fine because you, you get to know knocks. Why don't they have a bell that when you press it, it makes that noise? Because they haven't done that yet. Well, Maybe yeah, that's yeah, an you, idea. Could, you could do a sample of a... Like that. So when they press the doorbell, she hears... That's easy, that's done. You could sort that out for her. Well, I don't want to start getting dragged into it because... Uh, Why don't you make Auntie Nora a bell that knocks? Well, it could be done, but the fact of the matter is, it isn't, and that's why she didn't want double glazing. But why don't you tell her, say, <laughs> that's Auntie Nora, why she have double glazing, double be warm, be safe, hear the knock. Hear the knock of the bell on the doubly door. <laughs> Auntie Nora, hear the knock of the bell on the doubly door. She could fart until she's blue in the face. No one will be able to hear. But look. No one will be able to smell it. But this is double it. Double glazing. This is tremendous. It. This is it, though, isn't it? She wouldn't be around now. If it wasn't for people interfering, coming up with tablets, uh, m making weak people live longer. Right. Are you annoyed at that? You're annoyed. I know he's such a fascist, isn't he? And yeah. you're a weak person who has been allowed yeah. to live. Yeah. No, Eugenics but the, is where you'd, you'd be up here. I, I, but don't you see what I'm saying, though? The way the world. We've, we've yes. changed more than the world has. <laughs> we can't handle anything now, can we? Look at it, like I say, a bit of snow, a bit of cold, everything comes to a standstill. Yeah. Oh, I can't go out, it's dangerous, you'll slip over, people having time off work. Yeah. What would you do, right, if you run a business, right, your business could go under, right, it snows a bit, you've got ten employees, you're paying them well, and they go, I can't come in today, Carl, a bit icy. I'll do, I'll do it, OK? Right, they're snowed in, right, you're running the business, what are you running? 
It's a, uh, let's not, don't, you know, I'm not going to big myself up. It's just a, no, it's a factory. Wanna, it's it's you bends. I make you, no, don't, don't bends. You yeah. bends for, you know, Toilet, so yeah. you want to, okay, right, okay. So, so ah. you, you, you pay them all right, don't you? I'd say most of them are on above average. So you're there. What time do you get in? Um, about quarter to nine. Quarter to nine, waiting for them to come in at nine, yeah? Yeah. Okay, right, it's snowing. It's a bit snow, snowy, you got there. It took you a bit while. You'd set off early, did you, or...? Gave myself a bit more time because I had to put the heating on the car. Okay. Ring, 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 ring. Hello, uh, uh, KP Plumbing. Oh, oh, uh, is that is that Miss Pilkerton? Yeah, it is. Yeah, who's that? Oh, uh, it's uh, it's Sheila. Um, listen. Sheila, shouldn't you be here by now? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I was going to set off. Well, don't, but... we'll set off now. Stop wasting time. We've got a big order on. No, I know. We're all but... on a bonus here if we get this done. I'll see you in uh, ten minutes, shall I? I can't make it. What? I can't make what? it. What? Why not? The car won't start and it's slippy on the drive. I just can't get out. Get the transport. I'll see you in, I'll give you 20 minutes, all right? Don't no, worry about it. Well, Thanks for calling. I I'll see you in a bit. I'm also scared of the ice. I'm scared of the ice. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to come in today. It's dangerous. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm just going to wait until the ice and snow goes away and then but I'm going to come in. But they're predicting it's going to be about two weeks before yeah, they clear all this. Yeah, I can't really travel in this. It's oh, a bit dangerous. Well, I'll tell you what. You stay at home. I'll, uh, I'll replace you. Because I need someone to come in. Well, you're firing me because I can't get into work with this. This well, I, I got think, into work, Sheila. Yeah, I know, but I mean, you don't live with me, do you? If you did live with me, then no, you'd probably it see bad, how it was bad where I was as well. Yeah, I'm you, here. Do you know how bad it is here? When you come round and have a look how bad I'm, it is here, no, you drive I'm my. Not tell you what, you come round and drive my fucking car because I'm snowed in. You fucking calling me a cunt, and I tell you, if you fire me, I'll take you to a drive unit. You bald headed wanker. Right, you're fired anyway for for that. You're in fucking trouble then. Mm. Right then, see ya. <laughs> right, and right. she's she's done with. She's I'm 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 one hundred percent with Carl on this. One hundred percent, and especially because I've been living in Argentina for almost twenty years, unfortunately. But anyway, um, Argentina has this maybe not worldwide fame, but it should. But it has a fame within itself that the people. The everyday Joe everybody or whatever, um, day to day, the people in Argentina do not want to work. They are some of the laziest freaking people in the world, man. Just absolutely. We're talking about a country that has about like, I don't know, easily 30 national holidays official holidays uh made official uh during the year where people don't have to go to work and if one go you know it ends up being on a tuesday or a wednesday they make the whole week a holiday so people don't have to work so they can enjoy that freaking day and um almost every freaking nothing is open on sundays anywhere nothing nada and then everybody takes a nap from 2 p.m. to like 5.30 p.m. So nothing is open during the day. They, they never want to work. When you go to a store, they don't want to work. It's like it's, it's one of those things where they're just so, and if it rains, they don't want to go in this. And it's like, nah, dude, nah. This country is freaking just, ugh. I don't want to talk about it because, bleh. But the one thing that would make this country move forward would be if people got off their ass and worked now i am somebody with a very strong worth ethic worth ethic there you go and i'm with carl on this if carl got to work in the snow so can sheila i mean freaking move your butt man unfortunately the world we work the world we live in moves by people working so you gotta work you gotta get ahead in life you gotta put the work in so I'm with him on that. And, you know, there are obviously situations and exceptions and this and that. But Sheila did not have a good reason if Carl was able to get to work. It's weak anyway. Ring call then. Mm. Oh, then. I need so, to yeah. get that off my right. chest. <laughs> um, she's, she's done with. She's weak anyway. Ring, ring. She's weak anyway. Ring, ring. KP Plumbing. <laughs> uh, uh, is that uh, Miss Pilkerton? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Hi, it's Bobby. Oh, um, Bob. Yeah, um, 
bit of trouble. Um, uh, in my area, it's absolutely snowing. It's possible. No one's getting out. I live near Sheila. Oh, listen, way. yeah, well, yeah. Sheila's just been on. She's saying she All can't right. get in either. She can't. I've just seen her out there trying to dig her car out, and she's at her back. She's really, really tried hard to get to work, but she can't do it because she's, she's not very rich, and her car doesn't work, and she hasn't got the right tyres. And there's no public transport. They've cancelled those. Wrong snow on uh, this country. I'm not going to make it in today, son, so um, I'll see you tomorrow, right, boy? Well, no, you're saying you'll see me mm. tomorrow. Yeah. But but you'll probably call up tomorrow with the same thing. Well, only no, if it's snowing still. No, listen, it might not well, well, I, can't, I can't run a business like this, Bob. Yeah, it's not my fault, is it, really? So go round to Sheila's and, and like, slag me off if you want. But I'll tell you I'm what, you're not coming back here. Oh. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that was much. That was a little much. One chance. <laughs> Give him one chance. Oh. Well, you didn't even give them one chance. No, because they'd done it before. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Just annoys me. <sighs> oh, shit, bad that is only gone and written it down. Okay. The jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um... My mum called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified <laughs> flying objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> So we get uh, we get a clue there as to why you you uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's oh, you know, I mean, Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin brackets astronaut has got some evidence that aliens exist. Mm. Yeah, I told her that I found out today that the days are about thirty six minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it, think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here, yeah. people are going, Ow. see you tomorrow, I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. <laughs> they've got a longer day, productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. <laughs> fly. Yeah, up, oh, it, over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel. Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> but, but, has Suzanne heard about the immune system? Goes, her. She never indulges no, in it. scares sleep. her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of. It doesn't scare her, it, it scare bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> scares her. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. It's been the horses regular for ages. But there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh fruit and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> oh, God. I met Suzanne after she finished work and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus. It's always having a brew in a cafe. <coughs> it's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I looked tired and fed up. She taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed, though, because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. is such a noisy world, though, isn't it? It is. London is noisy, very noisy. I think just everywhere, just noise in general. They were saying yeah. how like, every noise has been used at least five times or something. What do you mean? Because there's only so many noises in the world. I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. No, there's only so many what noises. Do you mean every noise has been used five times. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because I've, I've, every noise once has been used at least five times. <laughs> there's only so many noises. It's like a piano, isn't there? There's only so many notes. Yeah. And there's only so many noises. Right. But because there's so much stuff, 
the same noises are being used again. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> By whom? Who's reusing the noise? By whatever. So, so a woodpecker have... when it's woodpecking? Yeah, yeah. Some some birds make noises that would sound like a Ford Escort. Just because there's there's only so many noises that people can use. <laughs> what is he talking about? Noises are a byproduct. Outside yeah. an instrument, yeah. noises and are a byproduct. They're a machine. They don't go. Watch me make this <laughs> noise. Make this machine. It, it makes the noise it makes yeah, when but, it's doing but something. Why does it make that noise? Why not pick another noise? They don't pick but the who's noise. Picking the noise? That's a printing what... press makes the noise because it's the sound of the thing yeah. going down. Yeah, you so know, printing... a hammer makes that noise because that's what it does. No one's going. Oh, can we make this make a different noise? No, it's it's a byproduct. I it's, know. So there's only so many noises. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> when Steve yeah. Wilson Drock came and I went... <laughs> I went... <laughs> First... I don't know what he means either, so this is one of the... One of those few times where nobody's getting Carl and I can't be like, no, but he means that, no, I have no idea. <laughs> Second of all, I don't think I've ever heard Ricky so just kind of like desperate to understand and just can't. <laughs> He's just like so... Oh my God. Mean. When Steve yeah, I love the... No. So there's only so I many noises. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> when Stevenson yeah, Drock came and I went, <laughs> I went, can you make it go? <laughs> no. It's what that's the noise it made. I know, but then, say like a new frog comes out. Oh, for <laughs> what do you mean a new frog comes out? They find a new type of frog. Right. It makes a noise, and yeah. they'll go, yeah, I knew it was going to sound like that. What are you talking because about? Because there's only so many noises. Nothing, no, no animal comes out and makes like a weird noise, and you go, I've never heard that noise before. They go, oh, that sounds... Oh my god. Oh, even the, the freaking blue frog. Oh my god. Oh, this is just. And yeah. they'll go, yeah, I knew it was going to sound like that. What are you talking because about? Because there's only so many noises. Nothing, no, no animal comes out and makes like a weird noise. And I've never heard that noise before. They go, oh, that sounds like a chicken. Or it sounds like a Ford Escort. Or. <laughs> There's only so many what noises. What frog sounds like a Ford Escort? Well, no, but there can't be so many because you've used Ford Escort twice as an <laughs> right? analogy here. So you're running out of noises. You've been with Chicken and Escort so far. I can't explain it. But the problem it. is a Ford Escort sounds a bit Clearly. like an Austin Allegro. So I, I know, know, yeah, yeah. And a chicken, you're ripping off the turkey, you gun. <laughs> <laughs> Cutoffs are getting great. Oh my gosh. What the. I, if anyone, anyone at all has any kind of idea what the hell he was trying to talk about, I'm interested. I'm interested, man. I want to know where the, the hell he was going with that. Oh man. Wow. I absolutely love the animators of this, by the way. Every time they, they, they call back to earlier episodes, it's just so well done. I love it. Oh, my God. Okay. That was great. That was... <laughs> oh, my tummy hurts. Jeez. So, that was nice. I even got to rant a little. It was a good day. Good day. <laughs> anyway, guys, I mean, it's over. So thank you for watching. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate it. And um, I'll be checking stuff out. Idiot Abroad will be soon. I need to not be able to die.
my voice box needs to remain as healthy as possible. So that it might have to wait a couple days. But I will get it done. Obviously. Anyway. Oh, man. Whatever you guys are off to do. Oh, oh, I have a quote semi-relevant to what we were saying. What we were saying, what I was saying. What I was yelling earlier. Anyway, it, it, it is work hard so you can shop harder. There you go. Uh, I like that one because, again, hard work pays off. So there you go. Anyway, I don't know. I'm all over the place, but I feel good, and that's all that matters. So. Good. Goodbye covers it all. So goodbye, guys. Toodles. Have an awesome one.